Okay. Um, yeah, I will start. Uh, so we, we want to show you how easy it is to uh, create a decentralized application on Ethereum. And we will actually create a whole app from scratch in one hour. At least I hope that will work. <laughs> and I will start uh, explaining the, 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 the mechanics of the uh, application. Then uh, Alex will explain something about the design principles. And uh, Fabian will show you how to, use the, to create the user interface. So as uh, we, we try to uh, create an application that allows you to sell things over the internet, and um, yeah, how, how would you usually do that? So Bob has some money and wants to buy an item from Alice, and one way uh, would be to, for Alice to first send the, the item, but that could go wrong. And the other way would be to, for Bob to first send the money, but that could also go wrong. And uh, yeah, what you usually do is you use an escrow. So both send their stuff to the escrow, but that could also go wrong. <laughs> so let's do the same thing on Ethereum, where we have a smart contract uh, that does exactly what it is programmed to do, and it can never fail. But of course, it's a bit more complicated because it has to interface with the real world. And that, so we cannot really send the item to the contract. But we will do something else. And this is an, the idea is originally by Oleg and Dreef. And so what we do is the, the seller puts a deposit of two times the item value. And then Bob uh, puts the same deposit into the contract. And then Alice sends the item to Bob. OK, so at this point, uh, for both Alice and Bob, it's impossible to withdraw the money from the contract. The only option Bob has is to say, yes, I received the item. It's exactly uh, what you promised. So uh, Bob can pull out uh, his, his deposit and send the three other coins to Alice. Which so and by that he has paid Alice and all got their deposits back. And the other option is for Alice. So if Bob says that's that's not the item I bought, or if yeah, if something goes wrong, Alice can refund Bob. So that's the only option for Alice. And then both get their deposit back. Okay, so that's the model now. Let's try to implement that. Did you switch the? Ah. Yes, it, it should be. Ah. I'm going to do it. And the keyboard. And I'm going to fix the keyboard too. So display arrangement mirror display so now it's everything is mirrored and now the keyboard is for keyboard and let's go here see if it's okay yeah oh yeah it's your <laughs> okay so uh this is the the thing called browser solidity you might have seen it uh that's a javascript uh an offline and online JavaScript application, which includes the Solidity browser, uh, the Solidity compiler. So it will show us uh, any errors we do when we write the contract. OK, let's start with a function called uh, the function that has the name, same name as the contract, uh, which will be the, the constructor, which will be called when the contract is created. Uh, what it does is. It registers the person that created the contract as the seller. And msg.sender is uh, a variable that, that contains the address that called the function. And we said Alice is required to put a deposit. So and we will make that so we will determine the, the price of the item automatically by that, the half of the deposit. So
So Alice has to send uh, as a deposit twice the, the value, so the value is half of the deposit. Okay, then uh, what can Bob do? This can be called by Bob, so let's register the buyer as the sender of that message. Oh, sorry. And uh, we check that the that he also sent the deposit. Okay, what happens here is so this throw keyword uh, when that is executed, then an exception is created, and the effect of an exception is that the whole transaction is reverted. So if uh, Bob does not send the correct value together with this function call, then this will not have any effect at all, and uh, the money he sent will be automatically uh, sent back to Bob. Um, Okay, and after Bob has confirmed the purchase, Alice will send the item, and the next thing Bob can do is uh, confirm that he received the item. Um, we have to check that this function is only called by Bob, because when Alice calls the function, then it's kind of missing the point. So. We'll do the same thing here. And uh, we said that when, when Bob confirms the purchase, then Alice will get her deposit back. It w she will receive the, uh, the price, and Bob, is, Bob will get his deposit back. Uh, back so We'll send once the value to Bob. Uh, sorry. And it might be that by some mistake, some more money is left in the contract, so we'll just send to Alice all we have left. This is used by, yeah, you can use this dot balance for that. Okay, um, what is missing now is that we, so at the current point, confirm received can be called before confirm purchase. This is bad, so we will add, we will turn this contract into a kind of state machine. And the three states are created, confirmed and disabled. And we will add a variable of this type that holds the current state. Okay, and uh, confirm purchase can only be called in state created. And confirm received can only be called in state confirmed. And of course, the states change accordingly. Okay, and then the other option we had was that Alice. Hmm? Ah, yeah, uh, we do not have to initialize state here in the constructor because it's automatically uh, set to the first value of the enum. So it's automatically created. And then Alice had this uh, option to refund Bob. Mm -hmm. 
So this can only be called in state confirmed. And only by the seller. and it will disable the contract. Okay. How much time do you have? How much time do you have left? Okay, then we can still make this contract pretty and use some more solidity features. <laughs> so you notice that Almost any, every function starts with if state equals something, if sender equal, uh, does not equal someone. So we have these guards, and their effect is always to revert the whole transaction because it was uh, sent in an invalid way. Uh, it was ca called in an invalid way. And uh, Solidity has this feature called modifiers, which is basically yeah, it's something like macros, some, some code that can be prepended or appended to uh, the, the function code. And it's very convenient to implement these guards because it's also, yeah, you, you will see. So, um, we'll first start with a very general condition modifier. And if the condition is not met, then it throws. And otherwise, we will have this underscore and the meaning of the underscore is that at this point, the, the body of the original function will be inserted. So, um, oh yeah, we can use that in the, in the constructor in a nice way because um, it's, we, we divide by two here, and if the value Alice sent is not an even number, then it's kind of bad because we will lose one way. <laughs> so, we'll add a condition that MSG to value modulo 2 is 0. And this will just prepend this if the value is not 0, then throws to the constructor. And then we have a similar modifier in state, which takes a state as argument. I would write it a bit shorter that we see more. So if the state is not S, then it throws, otherwise it continues the function. So And we can also move that up here. So it looks much nicer now, I would say. And here we also have in state confirmed. Oh yeah, and yeah, so we said that only the buyer can call confirmed, so we'll add a modifier only buyer, which checks that the sender is the buyer. does not reduce the size of the contract. It will inline all the code. Um, so modifiers are only a way to, to make it better visible what actually happens. So you can add these nice guards. You see, oh, only the buyer can call that. You can, yeah, you, you, 
you, you better see the, the, the logic and, and the, the state. So confirm purchase can only be called, oh no, that's, that assigns the buyer. Then we have this only confirmed. Oh yeah, and you notice all these errors here when I type. When I type. So we, all, we do not have the modify only seller yet. So we'll just add it. Okay, and that's almost it. So this implements the whole logic of the contract. Uh, the only thing missing to make it nicer for Fabian later is events. So um, we need a way to, to notify the user interface if something changed inside of the contract. And I'm not sure if they will add all of them. So. What's the last thing received? So events are just, um, yeah, they, they look like, they look kind of functions, but they don't have an implementation. And what they do is they store information on the blockchain in, a, in, a, in an index data structure, which makes it easy, very easy to search for them. So you can just query the whole blockchain, give me all blocks, give me all transactions where uh, this event called refunded was, was executed. And uh, you can also have uh, watches on these events, which means that your user interface gets a callback from the node uh, when a new block comes in that has this event. Oh, the audience is a better is a very good spell checker. Okay, that's it. Um, can you work with that? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs>